for this assignment, you're going to draw your own picture in Code Sculptor. So for homework, you are supposed to come into Code Sculptor documentation and look at the module for graphics. So here we are in the graphics module. We went into Canvas, and you just kind of did a refresher on your draw handler, doing text on Canvas. We've done both of those before. And then you took a look at how to do a line segment, a connected line segment, so it's a polygon that's not filled in, a polygon that is filled in, a circle, which you can fill in or not, a point, I didn't really have you look at, and an image. Images are a little more complicated. If you want to try it now, you can, but we're basically going to stick with doing lines, polygons, and circles. And with just this few steps here, you can create pictures. So here's a simple picture that I drew, actually in part of one of my classes. It's just a truck, okay? So, and it's all with lines and circles. I didn't even use a polygon, although I could have if I wanted to do a rectangle. I just did a really thick line. So it looks like this. Everything's in my draw handler. And then these lines, they come with Code Sculptor, so you really don't have to change them. This is gonna be the size of your canvas. So right now it's a square. You can adjust that. So if you want a bigger canvas, this is your X, how wide it is, and this is your this is your X, how wide, this is your length or your Y, how, how tall it gets. So here's just a simple example of using your points, similar to how it showed you, and your colors. So what you need to know about the canvas is it's very similar to what you do in algebra, but just a little bit different. In algebra, you're used to this corner down here being your origin, and then X is going across and Y is positive going up. But in programming, this corner is going to be your origin, so this is 0, 0. Now your X's are still going to go across, so the smallest X is right here, 0, 0, all the way to whatever your frame width is. So if your frame width is 100, the, tile, the biggest X would be 100. Remember, you can set your frame, so it doesn't have to be this small. You can set it as big as you want, and that's as big as your X can go. Now your Y is going to start at the top, and positive numbers are going to go down. So the smallest Y is going to be here at 0, 0, and the biggest Y is going to be down here. So it's just a little bit of a different thinking, but you'll get used to it. So if I wanted to do this point right here, I think how far over for my X, how far down for my Y, and then this point, how far over and how far down. So your coordinate system is going to be the same, X, Y for this point, X, Y for this point, so beginning and end, and then you can set your thickness and your color. So for this lesson, you're gonna just practice get, uh, creating some drawings on your canvas. So what I want you to do is just put some lines of code in here into your own draw. So you start a new program in it's Code Sculptor, and in Draw, you can keep some text if you like, and just try doing some circles, lines, do some polygon, polylines, polygons, you know, even it doesn't have to make a picture. Just try some. See how it goes. Then when you feel comfortable, you might want to actually try drawing a picture. And you can just kind of guess at what the points are, or if you want to, here in the backpack, there's some graph paper that I designed a long time ago. So it's going to have X up to 600 and a Y up to 450. Of course, you can go bigger than that. And every line is 10 pixels. So if you wanted to say, like, I want to draw something here, you can kind of use this as your guide to help you know what your X and Y values are. So go ahead and take some time to do that. I'm going to come back to this video lecture, and we are going to talk about using functions. Now the main concept for chapter five that we're gonna be working on is actually using functions. We've been using functions pretty much since the first week. So this isn't a new concept, but how could I take my program that I had here and use functions? Because there's many reasons to use functions. We use functions so that we have smaller chunks of code. If you recall when we programmed in Alice last year, you didn't want any of your procedures or methods to be very long. You kept them kind of short. That really helps with debugging, and there's other reasons too. But the shorter we have our functions, 
the easier it's going to be to make some changes, to reuse our code, and to do debugging. So even with something as simple as this truck, can I divide it up into some different procedures? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to change my draw, my draw handler to just calling two other functions. So I took the wheels and I took the body and I created them with functions. So they're going to have one parameter. That parameter is going to be canvas, which also gets passed into draw and draw passes it into the other two. So this kind of becomes like a main function that's going to call my helper functions in a way. So once you have your picture basically drawn, can you divide it up into at least two helper functions and call those helper functions in your draw handler? Then we're going to go even one step further. And now that you have your picture divided up into functions, there's yet one more modification that we can make that will make this a little cool. So one thing you'll notice when you run this program is it just shows the picture right away. We have no buttons. You're on the program, the picture shows. So that's pretty okay, but it would be even cooler if we added a button and it, we didn't see the picture until we clicked the button. This could give you more options. I could have several buttons and several different pictures, and I only draw the picture of the button I, pick up, I click on. So we're going to make a couple modifications. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to take out this draw handler right here, and I'm going to actually create another function that's going to be an event handler for my button. So I'm just going to call it draw pick. And it's going to need draw. So I'm going to take this line of code right here and I'm going to put it right there. So I have to connect. Okay, so I've just created a new function that actually calls the draw handler, which calls draw. Now I'm going to put in my button. And if you don't remember how to do the button, you can always come back to your code sculptor documentation or go back to any of your programs. Okay, so I've got one already done right here. Put it right here. So I'm going to do my button one equals, here's my frame.add button. On the button, it's going to say draw pick. Here's the event handler, and I'm just going to set it, give it a link. So when I click on the button, it's going to come here to draw pick, and draw pick is going to do the draw handler. So notice the picture does not show up right away until I click on it. And and let's try again. And there we go. So you just have to be a little careful with your parameters there. Made a little mistake. It can happen. So what I want you to do is the same very thing. Make this modification so you're going to add in a button which has its own event handler which then calls the draw event handler. Now one final thing you can do if you have time is add to your picture. So if your picture is the same as mine, you can, I've added a house to it. Maybe your picture is different from mine. That's even better. So you can make your canvas bigger and maybe you can add to it. So I've just added a house. You see I don't have the button on this one yet, but hopefully you still have your button. And I just added some more things to it. So of course I want to keep lots of functions. So I still have my wheels, I still have my truck, I have my house, I have my doors and windows. And so as I add to my picture, I'm just going to add functions. So I divide everything up into little chunks, and then your draw handler just calls each one in order. The order does make a difference, so if you change them around, you kind of see what happens. So I don't have to change any of this. It's already set. I'm going to have my button in there, and just you can keep adding little functions and keep adding to your drawing as time permits.